We want to take you now to the White House, where National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby, is speaking at the daily press briefing. Let's listen. We aren't at a point now where we have a lot of great detail on uh, on this bombing. Uh, certainly, our uh, our hearts go out to all the innocent victims uh, and their family members, who are obviously their lives are going to be forever changed by this. But we don't have any um, we don't have any more detail in terms of how it happened or who would might be responsible for it. On your second question, uh, again, I, I would point you um, to uh, to our Israeli partners to talk more about this. The, the, we're, we're again not in a position to uh, confirm the specific reports. I would just tell you uh, that Al Huri uh, was a noted, designated global terrorist, and if he is in fact dead, nobody should be shedding a tear over his loss. Uh, I know you said you don't have any great detail on who was responsible, but can you rule out that Israel had anything to do with this? We have no indication at this time at all that Israel was involved in any way whatsoever. No indication, but just to be clear, you don't think, did they support or assist in, in some other way? Uh, I, I would, I'm not going to speak for another nation. I would just tell you that we have no indication that Israel was in any way involved in this. And given that this was the Soleimani anniversary, uh, did you have any intelligence that something was being planned for this day? We certainly had uh, no indications that there would be some sort of violence surrounding uh, the anniversary of his death. Uh, just to follow up on uh, the, the Lebanon issue, is there any concern that that particular strike might uh, expand the conflict regionally? Well, I would just say, Trevor, everything that we've done, in fact, the laydown I just offered of the force posture changes that the president has ordered in the region has been designed to prevent an escalation or widening or deepening of this conflict. Um, as we've said before, we don't want to see it widen beyond Israel and Hamas. And again, we're going to keep working with partners in the region to prevent that from happening. Okay. And then on the, the Red Sea, you mentioned that joint statement that came out today and that Singapore has added uh, their names to that as well. Yeah. Um, but that is just, you know, 13 countries total. That's smaller than the, the 44 that, um, that issued a statement in December. Um, and, you know, countries that you think would be on that list, like France, are, are not. Is there a region, reason why that's not a broader group of countries that signed on? I, 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 I mean, first of all, 13 other nations signing up to language like that, or 13 total nations, 12 others than us, uh, I, I think is significant. Other nations can speak for themselves about um, their decision making with respect to signing on to public statements. There are, as you know, many nations in, uh, that are assisting us in Operation Prosperity Guardian in the Red Sea that don't want to be public, that are contributing capabilities, but they don't want it public. So I, I think you're seeing a, an increasing number uh, of nations around the world, particularly as commerce in the Red Sea gets affected. And shipping companies are making difficult decisions about whether to transit the Red Sea. And the impact that it's beginning to, to have on global commerce, uh, countries are more and more becoming aware of this in increasing threat to, to the free flow uh, of commerce in the Red Sea by the, by the Houthis and are increasingly um, being willing to express their, their discomfort with that. Uh, John, thanks so much. Is it the White House's view that the elimination of Hamas is an attainable goal? What we've said before is, well, first of all, the Israelis should speak to their military goals. Uh, we have said that we absolutely believe they have the right and responsibility to eliminate the threat that Hamas poses to the Israeli people. Now, they have said for themselves, Peter, that the way they're going about that is really targeting infrastructure, you know, tunnels and command and control nodes, as well as leadership. It is not that unusual. Uh, or different approach than we took ourselves in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, going after the leadership network. Now, you can certainly significantly degrade a terrorist organization's ability to operate, train, uh, and conduct attacks by going after its leadership. Uh, you are probably not going to eliminate the ideology which underpins that group, and we've seen that in I uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, other groups. So let me be clear, there is a difference between language the U.S. has used in the past with the language degrade, to try to degrade the leadership and the ability to attack. So does the U.S., just to be clear, I understand Israel's role in this, does the U.S. believe the elimination of Hamas, though, is an attainable goal? We believe that it is absolutely an attainable goal for the Israeli military forces to, uh, to degrade and, and defeat 
Hamas's abilities to conduct attacks inside Israel. They, they can, it can be done militarily. Are you going to eliminate the ideology? No. Um, and are you likely going to uh, er erase the group uh, from existence, probably not. But can you eliminate the threat that Hamas poses to the Israeli people? Absolutely. Okay, let me ask you another question, if I can. We've been talking about the Houthis here. Um, we heard from Maersk and some of these other companies that obviously the big, the, the Danish shipping giant that paused yeah. its operations in um, the Gulf of Aden and in the Red Sea. A lot of other shipper, shipping companies are either pausing or rerouting right now. How concerned is the United States that these shipping companies may be pausing or trying to find other routes? or revisiting um, that region altogether right now, given the impact it could have on the United States in terms of supply chain, inflation, whatever else? Well, if we weren't concerned, we wouldn't have stood up an operation in the Red Sea now consisting of more than 20 nations to try to protect that commerce. The Red Sea is a vital waterway, uh, a, a, a significant amount. Uh, of global trade flows through that Red Sea. And by forcing nations to go around the Cape of Good Hope, I mean, you're adding weeks and weeks onto voyages and uh, untold do uh, uh, resources now, uh, uh, expenses have to be applied in order to do that. Plus, it's just a more dangerous journey. So obviously, there's a concern about, about the, the impact on global commerce. Is this a pocketbook issue that Americans could be concerned about, given the supply? We haven't case? seen that effect yet. At risk of being. It would depend on how long this threat goes and on how much more energetic the, the Houthis think that they might become. I mean, right now, we haven't seen a, a, a you know, an uptick or a specific effect on uh, the U.S. economy, but make no mistake, it is a key international waterway and it can have an effect on the global economy. Thank you, Karine. Thanks, John. Um, to follow up on uh, the eradication of Hamas, does the U.S. know how many more members of Hamas are left to eradicate? We, we, we have estimates. I'm loath to put the numbers out there right now because they are just estimates. Uh, but, uh, but Hamas still has a significant force posture inside Gaza. Is there any way you can characterize the progress that's been made? in terms of percentage? Uh, or, uh, how, how, how has Israel done, basically? If, you're, you know, if it's their operation, I've been, obviously you're keeping track of progress. Yeah, I've been trying real hard not to give them a report card here, and I think that's a, a wise thing for us to, to do, is to refrain from analyzing and armchair quarterbacking their military operations. Uh, they themselves have said that they have targeted and been successful against a range of leadership. Uh, of Hamas, uh, certainly at the brigade level and higher. And remember, these guys are organized like a military. It's not just some uh, ragtag group of terrorists. I mean, they have a pretty sophisticated military underpinning and structure to them. And they've gone after quite a bit of those leaders. They've gone after a lot of their mid-range uh, and lower level fighters as well. I think I'm going to let Israel characterize how they've been doing. But they have, without question, let me just say this broadly, they have had an effect uh, on uh, Hamas's ability to command and control itself, to resource itself, and quite frankly, to lead their troops. And just one quick clarification on the airstrike in Lebanon. Is the U.S assessing to try to determine who is responsible for that? For which one? The airstrike in Lebanon that killed the uh, Hamas leader. I'm not aware of any efforts of the United States to, to assess that or to analyze that. We certainly weren't involved in any way whatsoever. Thank you so much, John. Moving on to Ukraine, first of all, just your assessment. All right, we've been listening to John Kirby, the National Security Council coordinator for strategic communication, speak at the White House press briefing. We heard there Kirby saying the president spoke again yesterday with Israel's prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, about its ongoing war with Hamas, specifically trying to free hostages held in Gaza, now winding down their ground offensive. He was reluctant, where pushed by our Weijia Zhang, to give an assessment mm -hmm. on how Israel has done so far to give what he called a report card, but he did say that Israel has been effective in many ways. And he also mentioned that uh, the U.S. is now joining 12 other nations um, uh, in a joint statement condemning the ongoing Houthi attacks uh, currently taking place in the Red Sea. Yeah. Kirby also addressed the killing of a Hamas leader in Beirut by saying, quote, nobody should shed a tear over his loss.